In this video we're going to look at confidence intervals and in particular we're going to use the data set from Hong Kong with the, um, the whole data set is 25,000 records of human heights and weights as you can see here. Now it says here that the, the data is from children from birth to 18 years. I'm not entirely sure if that's correct. When we look at the mean you'll see that it's 60, oh, 68, 69 inches which is about 170 centimetres or a bit more. So I don't think that that's going to be children. I think that's going to be adults. So I'm not exactly sure who this is from. Uh, now I've put this up on the website so you don't have to download it, but if you are interested in looking at the whole data set, you can look at it here. Now the reason we're looking at this is because 25,000 um, observations is massive. So we can consider this to be almost a census or a a true look at a whole population and we're going to see what happens when we take samples and look at confidence intervals. So if I go into SPSS now you'll see that what I've got here is not the whole data set. I'm going to pretend that we have taken 10 samples of heights and weights from this data set and each sample is going to contain a hundred individuals or a hundred observations. So it just goes down to a hundred there. And you can see in the variable view that I've got height 1, weight 1 for the first sample, height 2, weight 2 for the second sample, etc. So in practice it's unlikely that you would ever get 10 such large samples um, that would you would usually just do the experiment once, so you would just have the first two columns. But we're going to see what happens when you do take repeated samples from a population to help explain the concept of, of error in sampling and what the confidence interval actually means. So if we want to take a, a look at the data first, uh, if we go into charts we can do just a scatter plot just to have a, a look at what we've got here. So I'm going to do height versus weight. That's taken out my height. Hold on. Height. Okay. So we've got height in inches, weight in pounds, and you can see that as people get taller, on average, they get heavier, which is probably what we would expect. Now, if we were after a confidence interval around the mean for these, so we wanted to know what the average height was and what the average weight was, we can do that through the Analyze menu, and we'll go here, um, Descriptive Stats, down to Explore, And I've got a whole lot in here, so I'll just take all these out and I'll put height and weight back in. So if you click on the statistics tab, it'll tell you that it'll give you the descriptives and it can give you a confidence interval for the mean. Now you can calculate confidence intervals by hand and it's not um, too lengthy a process. You can find the formula in a textbook if you're interested. Otherwise I'm happy for the com just to let the computer do it for you. So continue. Okay. So as usual SPSS gives us a whole lot of output and most of it we probably don't need. At the top here it just tells us that it's gone through looking for any missing data and we don't have any missing data which is um, which is always good and hopefully you won't have any missing data for your projects either. When you do larger e experiments in the real world often people will participate for a short time in your experiment or your survey and then you'll lose them halfway through and that's when you end up with missing data. So down here we've got two sections, one for height and one for weight. The mean height is 68.1411 inches and the mean weight is 121.2 pounds. So this mean height is the mean that's been calculated from this sample and every time we take a sample from the population we're going to get a slightly different estimate of the mean. And one way of knowing how accurately we're estimating the mean is this idea of putting a confidence interval around it. And this is saying that we can be 95% confident that we have covered the true mean with our sample. So our 95% confidence interval goes from 67.7 to 68.5 and this is a fairly tight confidence interval, it's fairly narrow and that's because we've got a nice big sample of 100 people. If we take a different sample we'll get a slightly different mean and a slightly different 
confidence interval. Now we can go through and do this all just with the numbers but actually it's probably a little bit easier if we do it on a plot so that we can see it. So there's a graph here if we go into chart builder. Now go to bar. I don't know why it's under this menu. It would probably make more sense to put it somewhere else but this is where it is. And what I'm after is this chart here that's got the circles with the lines around it and this is going to plot means for us with a confidence interval around them. So let's drag that up. Let's take out the weight because I don't want that. Now we've got the mean of height 1 but let's say we've done repeated samples and let's just do it look at the heights and I'm going to drag the other heights in here so we can look at several samples all together. So if I get height 2 and drag that up the top there, as soon as that pops up with that little plus sign it means it's going to add that into the data set rather than overwrite it. If I just pop it in here it'll take out the height 1, there it's disappeared, it'll take out the height 1 and put the height 2 in. I want it to do both of them so I've got to drag it up the top and get that little plus sign. That's fine, turn them into categories. Now I'm going to take height 3, height 4, height 5, height 6, height 7, height 8, height 9, and number 10. And you can see over here it's telling us that it's going to plot the mean, which is what we want. You actually could get it to do something else um, if for some reason you wanted it, but in most cases we'd be interested in the, the average. And we do want it to display the error bars, and in this case we could get it to plot um, a standard error or a standard deviation, and you will see these sometimes in published papers, they plot one of these two things. Um, Let's for the moment just look at the confidence intervals because I think this gives us the best picture of what's going on. And we want to do the, we'll just do the 95% confidence intervals. These are often taken as standard, but we could do a different level of confidence. We could be 98% confident, 99% confident, or maybe even just 90% confident. Uh, oh, I haven't changed anything. I didn't need to press apply, but okay. So what we have here is the mean and the confidence interval around that mean for all these heights. Now it's a little bit hard to see because it's actually plotted it all from zero which is not particularly useful. So if we double click on the y-axis and double click again there we can change the scale. So take out the auto and let's take that right up to let's try 67. Okay now that looks much better we can see what's going on there. I'll close that. Now what we're interested in, because these are all samples from a population and in this case because we happen to have this huge data set we can look at what the true population mean is. We might want to draw that on as a reference line. A reference line is just a line that you use to compare other values to. So if I click on this uh, symbol here where it's got a horizontal line and click that, it says it'll give me a reference line. Now if the true population, I better just check what it is. The, so the true population value is about 78 inches, so I'll leave that there. And it's already put that in, close, close. So what you can see here is that every time we take a sample from the population, we're going to get a slightly different sample mean. Uh, and so because the sample mean is different, the confidence interval is also slightly different. But 95% of the time, if we're using 95% confidence intervals, this interval will cover the true mean. And you can see in this case that actually all of ours cover the true mean. This one nearly misses it. If we did this 100 times, as in we took 100 different samples, we would expect five of them wouldn't cover the true mean and this is just due to random variation and that's what a 95% confidence interval means. The difficulty is is that usually you only get to take one sample from a population 
and usually you don't know what the true population mean is, otherwise you wouldn't be taking a sample. And so you don't actually know whether you've covered the true mean or not, but you just know that 95% of the time you will have covered it, and so you operate on the basis that you've got a fairly good, you've got a fairly good estimate there. Even when you haven't quite covered it, you're probably fairly close if you've got a reasonable sample. Now we can look what happens if we have um, a slightly smaller sample, as in what if we didn't have the facility to measure 100 people, what if we could only measure 20 people, would it still be a good estimate of the population uh, mean? So we can go into our data and we can actually just mess around with it a little bit. So say for heights 10 and height 10 and weight 10, we're only looking at the heights but we'll do it for both of them. Let's actually delete some of our data. So let's go to 51. And you can just press delete. And then for height and weight 9, let's just have a much smaller sample of 20 and see what happens. So I'm just going to select 80 of those observations and delete them. So you can see now, instead of having 100 observations for group 9, I've now only got 20, and for group 10, I've got 50. If we go back to the graphs and the chart builder, we're just going to plot exactly the same thing again, it's just the numbers would have changed. So I'm going to go back in and change the scale. Clicked on the wrong thing there. scale 66 and we'll go in here and add the reference line back in close and close now it doesn't look at first like very much has changed if I go back up to the other one. You can see here everything else should be the same. We only mucked around with height, the sample 9 and sample 10. So this is what sample 9 and sample 10 looked like before. And now we can see that sample 9, the average is about the same, but the confidence interval is much, much wider. And a, a wider confidence interval means that we are less sure of the the estimate. We are less sure that this is a good estimate of the true population value. So the confidence interval has to be wider in order to try and cover the true value. Now in here the the actual the the estimate seems to have changed quite a lot by deleting half of those values. So the sample 10 has changed from being below the mean to being above the mean, the true population mean. But you can see that the confidence interval still covers it. So it's just showing us, it's just illustrating that the mean we estimate from our sample is going to vary depending on how big and how good our sample is. And we're hoping that it will cover the true population mean even that we don't know what it is. And the confidence interval gives us some kind of indication of where this true population mean might lie. Hopefully somewhere within our confidence interval. Now the last thing that we can look at quickly is just seeing if we want to be more or less sure of our confidence interval. So in this case, Ah, oh, there it is. I wanted to bring up this sidebar, so element properties. Now it's probably going to do height one twice because I already had that in there. So if you lose your sidebar, that's the element properties and you just need to click on this to get it back. Now at the moment we are only 95% sure that, we've, that we're covering the true population mean. The question is, what if we want to be really, really sure of where our population mean is? We might want, we want to be more and more confident that we've got the right value. So if we want to be 99% confident that we've got the right value, we can change our level of confidence up to 99%. So this is like being, it's as if we want to be much stricter with our confidence interval. 
Now if I just muck around with this scale again, 67. Actually we might need to go down a bit. and draw our reference line in. Let's change that to 67.5. We'll change that back up to 68. Close. You can see now that we want to be 99% sure that we've got it. All these confidence intervals are suddenly wider. They're taking extra care to cover it. And this one that was only just covering it before, if I scroll back up, Oh, it was number 7, sorry, not number 5. Number 7 was only just covering it before. Now all of a sudden it's a lot wider, as if to say we're being extra sure that we're, we're covering it. Um, and the same is true if we go the opposite way, if we want to be less sure, if we're happy with a lower level of confidence, I should say. If for some reason just being 80% confident was good enough. Okay. And again, let's change that. Reference line, close. Now we've actually got one that only just makes it here. So this would mean if we took a sample 100 times, 80 times we would expect to cover the true value, which would mean 20% of the time we're not covering the true value. And we could drop that down even further if we wanted to, but we won't. So have a go at doing these confidence intervals. You can do it through the chart, and also you might need to get the numbers out, in which case you need to go through the Analyze, Descriptive, Explore tab, and that will give you the confidence interval there.